Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden. I'm CJ and today we are going to be doing Coding Improv, the show where the code is made up and the points don't matter. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to get five random words from the chat and then I have an hour to build something using those five random words. Now in order to suggest a word, you must be a viewer of Coding Garden here on Twitch and there's a redemption here called Improv Suggestion. It costs 1,337 seedlings and in a minute whenever I enable this, the first five people to suggest something using their seedlings is what we will use to build the thing. Now, if you're wondering, how do I get seedlings? Or that's not fair, I don't have enough seedlings. Just keep watching, because we do this show every now and then. As long as you're watching on Twitch, you're, you're gaining seedlings. If you raid with us, follow, uh, you get seedlings. And also if you're a sub, you get a multiplier on your seedlings. So just stick around, eventually you'll have enough to suggest for, for next time. Um, this is episode 21. We've been doing this since May of 2020. And we, we really, really, really are going to have a timeline limit today. We're only going to have five suggestions. It's going to move quick in three, two, one. I'm going to enable it in the first five to come in. And that's it. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. So <laughs> those are all the, all the, all the suggestions. We got gift from acid spark. Cool fun suggested Jim. America 2050 suggested Christmas. Clicky poo said birds and razor sun said Bitcoin. That's good. We got some new names here. There's typically people that like snipe it. They, 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 they snipe, uh, suggesting the word. <laughs> And they like suggest every single time, but you got in Razorson. Congrats. Yeah. Clicky poo, Razorson, cool fun. I, I, I don't know if I've seen suggestions from you before. Okay. So these are our suggestions, gift, gym, Christmas, birds, and Bitcoin. <laughs> So I'm going to I'm going to set a timer. Yeah, I don't know what the end result will be. So I'm going to set a timer. And, and really what we do is in the first five minutes, we try to come up with an overarching idea of what we're going to build. And then we, we set off to build it. So here we go. Hour on the clock. And uh, we'll do five minutes to come up with an overarching idea. And feel free to throw suggestions in the chat. Now, I see the word gift. I see Christmas. Uh, we could come up with like a like a gift idea generator. It doesn't seem that fun, but like we could do that. We have Gym. What can we do with the gym? Gift could also be. Oh, you're right. Gift could be a talent. So, uh, what if we have like a talented person at the gym that's Christmas themed? I don't know. I don't know. A game where birds gift bitcoins to gym bros wearing Christmas hats. <laughs> it's pretty good, David. We'd have to come up with the mechanics, but that's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. So it, we could do something like uh, some kind of secret Santa. Like, could we create a, a, a web page that people could actually use to play Secret Santa or something like that? An advent calendar. Ooh. I kind of like that idea. <laughs> it, could be, it could be, like, super weird, though. Like, uh, an advent calendar of gym bros. I don't think I want to lock in it. Oh, no. Birds at the gym. Birds, birds lifting weights at the gym. That's a thing, right? I'm pretty sure we can find... Birds with arms? Pictures of birds with arms? Yeah, if we did Secret Santa, how would we do that? But also, just birds with arms. I think that's an amazing idea. <laughs> that's like, that's gold. That's gold idea right there. So a bird with arm behind every advent door. <laughs> birds with arms is a subreddit. I'm I, I'm pretty, yeah, I thought that I, uh, I'd seen this before. <laughs> So, okay, so th this, no, this is good. I, I think this qualifies as like, the, this covers like birds and gym because birds with arms, it's like they're, they're, they, they're gym bros, right? Right? Okay. So if we create, I guess like an advent calendar where behind every single door is a bird with arms, I think that's great. And then uh, we could put like, put the current price of Bitcoin at the top of the page. That's it. That's what we're going to build. Okay. Uh, we have 48 seconds left. Great. We already came up with the idea. So, and I get, I like gift, gym, birds, Christmas, all of this. It, like, I, I think it's satisfied with an advent calendar. What we also will potentially need is like uh, a big birdhouse because the, the advent calendar is going to be a birdhouse with a bunch of little bird doors, bird doors. I, th I guess I'm thinking of like a cuckoo clock. We'll have to find like a background image to do that. Yeah, but it's basically going to be like a 25 day calendar. Yeah. Okay. This is what we're going to build. All right. We've got 54 minutes left using React, Vue, Vanilla, or Angular. I'll, I'll let you all vote just to make you feel like you have some kind of say on what's going on here. So we're going to do a poll. Uh, what to build it with. Uh, do we use React? Do we use Vue? Do we use Svelte? Do we use Solid? That's a new a new contender. Or just we, do we just use Vanilla JS? You have one minute to vote. What are we going to use to build this advent calendar of birds with arms? All right, what did I want to look up? I want to just find an image of a cuckoo clock. Is that is that the right term? Cuckoo clock? Yeah, like this. Oh, vanilla's the winner. Okay, so we're just going to do we're not using a framework. We're just going to use vanilla javascript. That's great. Help me out everybody. I need a I need a this is going to be our 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 advent calendar, but our advent calendar, I'm imagining it as just a a fancy house like this. And then we have little doors that open up 
to reveal each bird with arms. So what should I search for? What should this background image be? Generate it with Dolly. Maybe? We're losing time though. I want to have an image like in the next two minutes. <laughs> Uh, I guess the main issue is I need to log into Dolly. A wooden clock with 25 doors. That didn't do it. A big wooden house with 25 doors on the front of it. I mean, that's not horrible, right? Right? <laughs> We're wasting time coming up with an image here, though. A big wooden advent calendar of a house. Oh my god, they've done it. They've done it. This is it. I think it's, it's too many doors, but this is it. Which one do we do? This one. Solved. <laughs> let's, let's use it. Okay, this is it. Uh, it's not It's not super pretty, but yeah, basically what I'm going to do is like this middle section here, we'll come up with our own little door image. Okay, we've got ourselves the image. Let's put it onto a web page. So uh, I'm going to create an index.html. So vanilla.js was the winner. So we are just going to use a plain old HTML document. This is going to be birds with arms advent calendar. We'll have a script. We'll set type to module. So we'll try to do somewhat modern things. And we're going to have a source of app.js. So we're just going to have an app.js file that's going to have all the codes in it. We're also going to have a CSS file. So we'll call this styles.css. And then I need to create a styles.css. Now in here, we'll have like a div. We'll give this an ID of calendar. And I know I could do like a background image, but I'm, I'm just going to do some relative positioning here and just have the image of the house inside the div. And we're going to position everything else on top of it. So this source will be house-bg.png. Great. Let's start it up and see what we get. So I'm just going to use light server. So this isn't a build server or anything like that. It's just a static file server that automatically refreshes when things change. So right now you can see it's it's gigantic. I want to like fit it to the page. So let's add some styles. First of all, we'll do like a basic reset. So all the margin is gone. All the padding is gone on all, on all elements. And every element has a box sizing order box. Okay, uh, the body um, will have a, a width of 100 view width and a height of 100 view height. So we're gonna size the body to exactly to the viewport. And then our main element calendar is gonna take up 100% of that viewport. Um, so we'll do width 100%. Uh, I'm, a pro, I'm a pro CSS developer. So now the calendar element takes up the full width. And then now uh, we wanna style this, this house here. I'm gonna give it a class of house image. Let's just set this width to, I don't know, 90%. It should have automatic height. And then we'll set the calendar to be a, fl a flex box so that it puts that house right into, in the center. Like this. I mean, got the body. Takes up the full width and height. Calendar takes up the full width and height. Image takes up 90% width. Oh, I guess it's, I guess the image is just too big, right? I guess if we do like 80% of the width, could we do max width? Well, no, I guess because of the dimensions of this image, if we do height, then that's going to, that's going to keep it centered. I think that, that was the main issue is width technically made it bigger than the viewport like this. And I guess what we want then is, is V min. Yeah. So now it, even in when it's there, yeah, V min is what we wanted. So in the chat, somebody send me a Christmas red hex color. Oh, thank you, Shadow Lad. Here we go. Seems fine. Okay, we're, we're, we're 20 minutes in and we've done nothing. Uh, let's let's make a game plan so we can get this thing done. I, I kind of want to create a div that is like this background color and then overlay it on top. And then we're going to put our own doors on top of it. So this div will just be the, we'll give it a class of brown overlay. Okay, brown overlay, I guess, is going to have a, a height of 90 VPN. We'll have to figure out what the what the width is going to be. And then the background color is going to be here. There we go. And for now, if we do just do a width of 60 VPN, I guess we could figure out the exact aspect ratio, but it's fine. So what we want is we want this to have a position. So position needs to be absolute. And then the container will have a position of relative. And then we, I guess we, we can use VMIN for our top. So like, let's do like two VMIN from the top and then like two VMIN from the left. And we'll uh, try to position it correctly. I mean, also I could just throw this into an image editor and add a brown box, but it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll figure this out. So. Um, uh, we want it to be like right there and then we want it to be like right there and then the width uh, needs to be like that and the height needs to be like that. It's beautiful. Look at what we've done. 
Uh, position is how we position it on the page. Position absolute means I'm going to tell it exactly where to be, and top left is how I'm telling it exactly where to be. But in order for position absolute to be relative to its parent, which is the calendar container, it needed to have a position of relative. Well, <laughs> now we've broken it because... Wait, did I did I save this? It's It works when the image is that size. I thought it was going to be completely relative. Photoshop's gonna be faster, but we've already, like we've barely written any code and I'm not gonna use Photoshop. I think I can just use preview. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous that it's taken me 20 minutes just to do this. <sighs> okay, we've done it. That's, that's exactly what we wanted. Now I can get rid of the CSS. I guess this is usually how things go and this is why it's gonna take me more than an hour because I, I don't use my time wisely. Look at that, it's beautiful. Okay, we have 36 minutes to make this happen. <laughs> All right, now I need a, I need a door. I need a I need a door that we're gonna use for every day. Let's just use this, I guess. Right? Boop. And we'll uh, <laughs> we'll put the, the number on it dynamically. Okay. So now we have ourselves a little door. I want to put 25 doors on this on this on this thing, uh, just using HTML and CSS. I guess we'll use JavaScript to create 25 of them. We'll have a div here. We'll give this a class of doors. But now that I think about it, this div is going to need to be positioned in the same way that that brown box was positioned. Oh, well, um, we'll go ahead and give it a little bit of styles. So doors, width, we're just going to make it the height of uh, height and width of the container margin and relative. OK, we'll give it a try. So the doors are going to take up the full thing. And then in the JavaScript is how we're going to append 25 of them. So I'm going to create a, a variable for the doors element. This will be query document query selector for the element that has uh, the class of doors. So now that we have it, we're going to iterate up to 25. So i is zero, while well, i is less than 25, we want to create a little door image. And then that's just going to be document.create element image. And then we can set its source to be, yeah, 25, thank you, <laughs> door.png. And then the doors element, we will append it to. So we'll say append the door image. All right, by default, that'll just, where's it going to put them? Where are we at? Got the calendar. Uh, this is not running anymore. This is not saved, that's why. Okay, so we got the calendar. We've got doors, which are which are on the side now. We want to position those doors on top of the uh, on top of the thingy. We'll say position absolute, and calendar has position relative. We're gonna call this display grid and grid template columns. How many columns do we need? Five? Is it the other way? Five. Yeah. It looks great. Now we need to smush those down and position them onto the thing. So, Codex, you were saying if we don't do position absolute, if we just do like margin, 5 vmin, auto? No, it still needs to be positioned absolute, but with margin. I'm just trying to figure out what's going to be the best way to do this that's that's relative. No, because we do want 5 vmin of uh, margin on the left and the right. Top, left, right. What if, what if we set the width to 90 vmin? Seems fine. What am I doing? I mean, honestly, that's why I thought if I did width to 90 vmin, it should be the same width. Yeah, yeah, okay, so this is closer. This is closer. And then like, do these stay in that spot? They do, they stay in that spot. Uh, also, if we style each image in there to have like a, a standard width as well, like four vmin, then they should uh, resize I mean, not resize, they should stay in that exact spot no matter what. Okay, we're getting closer, we're getting closer, but we want those even bigger. Yes, a little less. Great. And then if we, let's, I think we should, we can be able to, we should be able to play with these. Yes, yes. We should be able to play with the styles here in the CSS now. And this should, this should stick around. So if we change, I mean, can I not? Honestly, this is why I wanted to. Uh, margin left, 5 vmin. And then margin right. I guess I just need a margin left. That's all I need because it'll just push it over. Like that. Cool. Uh, and then the width will go down to like that. Great. Does it work? Oh, look at me. Look at me. Uh, we've done it. We've done it. Okay. I'm not. So we only have 30 minutes left. I'm not even gonna. Not even gonna worry about their positioning. We're just gonna go with this. Make them. Oh, I guess you're right. Yeah. We do want them to be as big as possible. Okay. So if we position that like right there, and then this to like there. Great. And then uh, can we give it a gap? Yeah. We'll do that. 
perfect. We need to drop it down a little bit, but that's going to be easy. Super easy. Okay. 10 V-min, like that. All right. Oh, oh, and then we want gap. Gap as well. Gap is 1 V-min. It's so great. <laughs> and then the margin top. Push it down a little bit. Is that, is that, would that push it down a little bit? The doors. Yeah. Okay. 5 V-min. If only we could make the numbers correct. That's what we're going to do next. Okay. So <laughs> uh, each door will be a class and then we style the image inside of it. So actually, no, the door will have a width of 10 V-min and then the door image will have a width of 100%. Okay, so every image takes up 100% of the door itself. And so now in the JavaScript, instead of creating an image element, well, we're gonna do both. So we're gonna create the door element and that's just gonna be a div. And then we're gonna give it a class of door. And then we will append the door element to the doors, but we will append the door image to that. We've broken it. <laughs> uh, I shaved left instead of top. Oh, five and negative 10, okay. Perfect, <laughs> perfect. We have 25 minutes left. Oh, it's gonna be so, we got this, easy, easy. Okay, so now every door is a div that then has that image inside of it. And so what we'll do is we'll set the door to be a flex box. So we'll do display flex, justify content, center, align items, center. I guess these are technically squares. So I, I could do width and height, 10 vmin, I think. Yeah, that doesn't get too weird. But what that allows us to do is now inside, we're also, we can also append uh, a number to, and position it right on top of the other number. So we create the image and then we'll create a door number. And this is going to be a div. And then we set the text content to be I plus one. And we append that after we append the image. And then we give it a class of door number. Let's make it a span. Door number. All right, the door number, doors, door. I, technically, I don't need to do this nesting CSS, but this is a more specific selector. We want font family sans serif. We want font size, five vmin. We want position absolute. On the door, we want position relative. Is this the best way to do this? Like, I guess, yeah. So if we do position absolute, that's fine because then we will use margin top and margin left, to position the door number in the exact spot. And I guess I'm gonna do display of block. So that way we can give it a background color, white, and then like a width of four vmin and a height of four vmin. Let's see. Kind of. <laughs> So we'll, we'll find the right background color. I guess we can go ahead and do that. So if I do digital color meter is what's built into the Mac that lets me get these colors. That's going to be the background color of the door number. Okay. And then now let's try our best to position them. Right there. That's not horrible. Listen, this is not, that's not horrible. That's so, that's not, that's not bad at all. Okay. It's not perfect, but it's not bad at all. If I do text align of center... That's better. I mean, honestly, this has just been a CSS challenge up to, up until this point. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not, but let's see. Yeah, and so it totally resized. So if you open this on mobile, you're gonna you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it. Okay. So now we want to make it so that when I click a door, I get a random bird. Let's let's call the Reddit API for birds with arms. We'll just grab like the first three pages and then get 25 random images from that. So the way the Reddit API works, or at least if you're, I guess you could do it like this. So api.reddit.com birds with arms. I don't think you need to add .json if you do this. So that gives us back the JSON data. And then if you pass in this after property, that'll give you page two like this. So that's page two, etc. So let's uh, write some JavaScript that makes a request. We're going to get the first three pages, filter that down to only ones that are images because there's also text and video. So we just want images and then also make sure that they're not, they are safe for work and then get 25 random ones. Do we want 25 random ones? Yeah, I guess everyone's advent calendar will be a little bit different. Uh, we need a function that says get birds. Uh, this is going to be an async function. Um, and then we're going to await fetch. So fetch is how we're going to make the API request. We grab the response here. We will parse it. So we'll do response.json. And then we need to await that. And let's just get it working with the first page. And then once we figure that out, we'll do it with every other page. So I'll do uh, json.data.children. And then each child is a Reddit post and it has a data property. We can say the bird posts is children dot filter. So we're going to grab each post and then uh, we want to return post dot hint. I think post hint tells us if it's an image. Yeah. Post hint equals image. So we only want it if it's an image and there's something about over 18. Yeah. Over 18 is false. 
and it, it's a post dot data post dot data like this okay so we want to make sure that it is safe for work and it is an image i guess that's it i guess that's it and then we can uh we'll just grab the url from there so that's gonna that's gonna filter out all of the the valid bird posts and really, I just want the data property on there. So I'm just gonna map that to post.data because it's it's nested, right? So you have each one that has this data property and that's what I want. So I'm gonna map it so that I only get this. Should be fine. And then we wanna do this same thing uh, three times to get three pages of posts. I'm just gonna do a simple little little for loop here. So we're gonna, three times we're gonna do this, but we'll start off with uh, say birds <laughs> starts off as an empty array. And then we'll say, uh, birds dot uh, concat bird posts. And we have to reassign. So birds equals birds dot concat. And then we'll also have our after variable that starts off as nothing. And then when we get back a response, we'll set after to be the next one. So this is going to be JSON dot after. JSON dot data dot after. The next time around, we use this after property here, that. And that's going to give us a whole bunch of birds. For each one, We'll log their URL. We should have three pages worth of birds. Okay, so when the page uh, loads, we make the request to Reddit. We look at the console. There we go. We have ourselves three pages worth of birds. Let's see what this one is. It's fine. I would prefer. I would prefer to have like a like this, <laughs> like an owl with with birds with arms, or a goose. Okay, this is not. This is not exactly what we were hoping for. Like, honestly, do we do we. Do we want to just curate our own list of birds with arms as a statue? This is ridiculous. I think, yeah, we'll we'll go with it. Oh, you're totally right. You know what? Yeah, that's. I think that's the way to go. Because if we sort by top, we could do top all time. And those are very likely going to be really good ones. That's a good point. Uh, let's do it. So if I do top all time, the old razzle dazzle. I mean, people like to post memes on here. I feel like this doesn't fit as well. Somebody's posted that one five years ago. That's the way you get karma on Reddit. Is just like a year later, post something that that got a whole lot, of <laughs> that got a whole lot of uh, upvotes a while back. Okay, so I do believe if we just pass this into the URL. So if I do birds top sort and like that. So that should be yeah. That's the top one of all time. Second top, third top. Okay. Honestly, if we're doing this, we really only need we really only need two pages, I think. Great. Great. Okay, we got all these birds. Uh, now we only want 25 of them. So uh, we'll call this random birds, and that'll be an array. And then we're going to iterate from i equals 0 up to 25. And for each one, we'll grab a random index. And that's going to be uh, math.floor of math.random times the length of the bird. So birds.length. OK, so we got the random index. Uh, the random bird is going to be birds at that random index. And then I'm going to remove that bird from the original array so we don't choose it again randomly. So say birds dot uh, splice splice takes out and we want that index we want to remove that specific index and we want to delete one of them I guess technically this little bit of magic right here would do that so remove it put it into this variable and then I'm gonna push this variable into random birds okay now after all that we have ourselves 25 random birds great so we've got an array of 25 it's gonna be random every time but that's fine i guess typically advent calendars um i guess oh here's what we could do we could do like okay after we get the birds back we're gonna store them in local storage so we'll say um local storage dot set item burbs and that's gonna be this array so json dot stringify that great burb and then that way when the page loads uh, if we already have the random birds, we don't get them again. So we'll say if local storage dot get item burbs, if it's not there, get the burbs. Otherwise, and then this will be, well, let's put this into a function called init because we want to we wanna call this like when the page loads. It needs to do async stuff. So we'll make this an async await like this. And then ultimately this will return the random birds like this. Start it off, do that. But if it's in local storage, then we're just going to do local storage dot get item burbs. We're going to stringify it. So JSON dot, no, we're going to parse it. JSON dot parse the burps. And then we're going to log random birds at zero. So we know that every time we get the same random bird. Uh, and then this does need to be awaited because this is an async function. Seems fine. Seems fine. Five, no way. There's five. There's 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Come on. Come on, Codex. You figured me out. We got 10 minutes. We can do this in 10 minutes. I need to actually call my init function. We get the first one. And this is... 
It's a bird. It's a bird with arms. <laughs> Um, but if we've done this correctly, when I refresh the page, we get, we should get that exact same one. So everyone's going to have their own unique advent calendar that will be repeatable. Okay. So, all right, we've got the birds with arms. Now we want to put those birds behind the, uh, behind the door. So when I click a door, I want to see that specific bird. Yeah. Let's just add a click handler on the door. Um, and also in our CSS, we'll give the door a cursor of pointer. So that way, when I, when I hover over these, the entire door. Yeah. So this is cursor pointer. So as I hover, the user knows that they can click on it. And then when I click on it, we're just going to replace the door with the bird itself. It's, it's going to be super easy. So now in our JavaScript, we create the, as we create the doors, we will put it there. And, and honestly, I'm going to, I'm going to relocate this for loop. So instead of just doing this for loop, when the page loads, we're going to do this for loop after we've loaded all of the birds in. So we get the random birds. Now random birds is an array of length 25. So uh, we can go ahead and add like a, a hidden element behind there or not even a hidden element. We can just replace it. So when the door element is clicked on, we will remove the door image, remove the door number. Actually, we won't remove the door image. We're just going to replace its, its source. So now the door image source is going to be random birds at I because we're in a for loop that should give us dot URL. Easy. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Okay, so I mean, I never said it would be easy to see the images, but I think one thing that we'll do, ship it. <laughs> one thing that we'll do is we'll, we could also like make the image pop up whenever you click on it. We also want to prevent you from clicking days that are not today. Uh, and in our CSS, we're going to make our door have an overflow of hidden. Um, so that way, if it's not a square, it gets, it gets hidden. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so we have six minutes left. What else is on our to-do? Behind every door is a bird with arms. Yeah, we've basically done it. We kind of need the current price of Bitcoin, but I, I want to I make this so that you can't click the day unless it is past that day. First of all, let's do this, because you can only click a door once. Put this in a function, door click. So add the event listener, and then inside of it, we'll remove it. So door element dot remove event listener, door click, door click. Great. If they click on a door, we need we need to put that in local storage because they've opened today's bird. How long do we have? We have five minutes. Okay, in five minutes, I'm gonna make this work like a traditional advent calendar in that if you click a door, next time you come to this page, that door will stay open. You can't click doors past today. And that's it. That's it. That's all. Okay. When you click a door, we're gonna put it in local storage. So we'll say local storage dot set item today's date. True. That's true. And so when we're building this out, we'll say if get item I, then we immediately just want to show the bird. Otherwise, we do what we did before. And we can create, we need to create this variable before we do all this, this clicky stuff. If it's not in local storage, set it to be the door. We add the click handler. Great. But the next time, next time, um, we only want to set the image source and we only want to append the door image and the door element like this. But this instead is going to be... Uh, what we did here, random birds at i.url. So I click this and it breaks. <laughs> Everything breaks. Uh, door number is not defined. I got to define this above the click handler. Cool. So if I refresh the page, we see day one, we see day two. If I refresh the page, we see that. Great. Okay. So we have three minutes to prevent people from clicking doors that are not past today. Now we need today's date. <laughs> so today, is it just date dot day or like a new date? Get day. Get the day of the week using locale time. I want get date. Get the day of the month using locale time. Today date. And then that gives us two, which is correct. It's just correct. When you, when you click on the door, if today's date is greater than or equal to I plus one, do it. Otherwise do nothing. That's it. That's it. So now we, we shouldn't be able yeah, see, I can't click day three or day. I can't click this until tomorrow. Uh, the, I guess the other thing is we can also make sure that it actually is December. So today month get month. Is it month like zero index or something weird like that? Let's see what it is. 11. Yeah. It's, for whatever reason, months are zero index. Okay. So uh, if today month does not equal 11, then return. Okay. That's it. We, we've done it. We have, we have our bird app. <laughs> we've got one minute left. I mean, I, we need the, the current price of Bitcoin. So what is it? Is this it? This is it. I'm just going to put this in the HTML. I never said it would be an API request. So we get ourselves a little H1 and we'll put Bitcoin and then that's the current price in US dollars. And we got 30 seconds left. We did it. This is it. We did, we did, we made, we made the app. Come on. I said current price of Bitcoin. I never said that it needed to be in real time, but we did it. Okay. So I'm going to deploy this and you all can go experience this bird advent calendar. Look, I, I'm going to say that I did it in the hour. All right. Like I'm the one that gets to choose on whether or not this actually happened. I did it. I did it. Did I say I get it from an API? The current price of Bitcoin is at the top of the page.
That's all I said. <laughs> That's all I said. Um, here's the, here's the thing. It actually would be pretty easy to get the price, but somebody did give me that API endpoint. So this is extra. This is extra. I'm going to do this here. When the page loads here on the init, we'll make the request to get the, the price of Bitcoin. So we'll fetch against that URL. This is, this is bonus time. This is extra. <laughs> let's see if this works. If they don't support cores, we're not, we're, we're just going to stop here, but let's see if they support cores. They do. It's that easy. Object.bitcoin.usd. Change it to red and green if Bitcoin is going up or down. That's kind of genius because then we could like toggle and then that makes sense because red is Christmas, green is Christmas. Okay, so <laughs> for all of these Bitcoin stretch features, five, we have five minutes. We have five minutes to do the Bitcoin stretch feature. So I'm going to request the Bitcoin price once every 10 seconds. And if it went up or down based on the previous price, we'll change the background color. Let's do this here. So I'm going to say get Bitcoin price and then we'll have a function an async function it says get Bitcoin price. Uh, we do the business here. We have the price. Uh, we'll, we'll put it right here. So I'm going to make a span that says loading. Bitcoin is loading. We should have set the font family for the whole page to be sans serif. And then I'm going to give this H1 text align center. So that'll put it in the center of the page. And then we need an element. Bitcoin price element is going to be document dot query selector for the element that has a Bitcoin dash price. We didn't call it anything. So we'll put the class uh, Bitcoin dash price on here. But now the uh, Bitcoin element, Bitcoin price element, we're going to set its text content to B. We could do the, the new inter international. Isn't there like a currency formatter? Number format? JavaScript format currency. Yeah. Yeah. And then the num here is uh, json.bitcoin.usd. Okay, so now when the page loads, we, <laughs> we, have, we have the Bitcoin price, which is great. But now we want to get it again every second. And we want to store the previous price. So we'll say let uh, previous price uh, starts off at zero. And then we'll say if the previous price is less than the current price, set background green, else set background red. We'll say less than or equal to. And then after all of that, we'll set the previous price to be the current price. And then we'll do this again in one second. So I'm going to set a timeout for one second. Well, five seconds. I don't want to pound their API. In five seconds, do it again. And we're, we're just setting the body background color. So uh, document.body.style.backgroundcolor is that. But that's this is red. Can someone give me a green Christmas color? Oh, and good call. Uh, so like when we're fetching the data, uh, isn't there like a no, like cash, no cash like that? I'll choose click, clicky boo. All right. So uh, in 10 seconds, we're going to get the next price. I guess we should log to know if it's actually happening. <laughs> We can look at the network tab to see if it if it makes the request. Yeah, so it got the price. And this is what I mean, because it got the price and it was the exact same thing. So it's not updating every 10 seconds. Also, we should probably give the H1s a little bit of margin. Vmin is the minimum of the width versus the height. And so the reason I have those those uh, those units everywhere is so that this is completely responsive. I mean, honestly, it's not it's not ideal <laughs> because if you're on a phone, it's going to be like really tiny like this. But basically, now that I have it as Vmin, um, depending on the minimum of the width versus the height, everything is sized relative to that. So you can see the images are getting smaller. Everything else is getting smaller. Yeah, the price of Bitcoin isn't changing, but that's okay. That's okay. Last thing we'll do, this is another stretch feature, but <laughs> we'll do this and then we'll be done. When we hover over the bird image, we'll, we'll make it really big so that you can actually see what it is. So we'll do this image that has the class bird image. And then in our JavaScript, whenever we set it to be the bird image, we'll give it the class bird image. We'll say door image dot class list dot add bird image. And then when you click it, uh, we set it to be bird image as well. And so now bird image uh, on hover will have a transform scale three. Well, um, <laughs> but then we need to uh, we need to set the overflow to not be uh, hidden on the the door itself. Yeah, because the, the door overflow hidden. So what we can do 
is when you hover this, we say overflow auto. Well, no. <laughs> overflow visible. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> look at those birds with arms. Also on hover, we want the uh, Z index to be real high. So that way it'll be right on top of everything else like that. Yeah. Okay. This this is it. This is our app. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm done here. But yeah, uh, I. I saw it in the chat. Someone was like, "Make this better." Um. I agree. Let's give the this a transition duration of two seconds. Now. Beautiful. Though the issue is, the moment you unhover, overflow gets hidden again, so it just like disappears. Can I center the numbers on the doors, please? It's not that easy because they're like relatively positioned. But okay, but I wanna I wanna <laughs> I wanna deploy this so that you all can get your own advent calendar. So advent of birds. Okay, so here you go. If you go to this website, you will get your own unique bird calendar for the month of December. Let's see so this is the de the deployed version. So it has different local storage. Let's see what bird number one I get. Look at him it's a bird with arms uh and then for today oh a little muscular uh parrot parakeet and then i can't click day three until tomorrow but if i refresh the page it always keeps keeps the birds <laughs> you got twitter twitter with arms nice oh nice oh you got a I guess that's a pokemon you got a pokemon bird with arms I guess also you can see my styles are broken in, in other browsers. I didn't do any cross-browser testing, but this this was a good time for sure. Has science gone too far? <laughs> nice. Oh, you got Dodrio too. Uh, apparently Pokemon make a lot of appearances here in these. <laughs> birds, birds with arms. Okay, so this has been super fun. Thank you everybody for hanging out. Let me tell you about all the stuff that I do and uh, why, why you should come back. If you check out the schedule, you can see every time I go live, it was fun. Thank you for being here, Clicky Poo. Uh, right now, the schedule for next week isn't up, but if you load this page like Monday morning, you'll see the streams that I have planned for next week and it should show up in your time zone. So you know, you know when to attend. And thank you, Coding My Feature. Thank you for being here. No news about my course, but I'm feeling better mentally, emotionally, psych psychologically, I guess that's mentally. So. Uh, my plan is to, to make some leeway on my course this weekend. I have a mailing list. If you join the mailing list, I send go live notifications. I also send one weekly update uh, where I talk about what we did last week, what we're going to do this week. And then eventually when I launch a course, I'll let you know on the mailing list. And also if I launch some new merch, I'll let you know on the uh, uh, on the mailing list. Yeah, my plan, my first course is going to be an intro to React. Uh, I do. So yeah, every now and then I'll do a Q&A stream. If you check out my, so I have two YouTube channels. I have uh, the main one. Uh, which is where I used to upload VODs, and then now we've started a uh, an archive channel. But if you search either of these channels for Q&A, once every two weeks, I'll do a Q&A stream where I just go live and just answer any questions people have in the chat. Cool. I think that's all I have to say. You can follow me on Twitter too. I send go live notifications there. Uh, we have a Discord where I send go live notifications, but also we have a help forum. So if you need help with code, you can ask over there. Regulars, am I missing anything? Did I forget anything? I have a personal channel, W3CJ, and I do IRL streams over there every now and then. So yesterday I actually did an IRL stream in Denver, Colorado, and I did, I was gonna, not a speed run, but I basically went to every food hall in Denver. Uh, so food halls are like, like this. Look at this. Look at this IRL quality. I, I was really excited that uh, I, I, did, I wasn't dropping frames, but this is a, a, a place called uh, Stanley Marketplace. It's actually right outside of Denver, but uh, we walked around in here. We drank a beer. We ate a bagel, and then I drove over to uh, Zeppelin Station, which is another food hall. Uh, this one. And I like walked around. And then we walked through Rhino, which is uh, uh, in Denver. And then we made it over to Denver Central Marketplace. And I bought a cookie. Actually, if I rewind a little bit, you'll see. <laughs> I bought a cookie. I don't know. If this kind of thing interests you, follow my personal channel. Uh, because uh, it's fun. We, we hang out over there. It's super chill. There's way less people, so I can answer most most things that happen in the chat. Okay, that's it. That's all. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, stay awesome, and uh, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this.